Hey guys, today I'm going to show you Collared Lizard Brumation 101. I have four simple and easy steps to follow from preparation, induction, maintenance, and duration, and the wake up process to truly put your collared lizards through a proper brumation to have success during breeding. Also, there are several warnings during this that this, if not done correctly, can harm or even kill your collared lizard. So make sure to follow these steps step by step and make sure to monitor your lizards so that they are doing well. I'm going to start with preparation and go through some key points to help make sure that your collared lizard is ready to be put through the induction process. So please stay tuned and hope you enjoy and don't forget to give me a like and subscribe to see more videos. Thank you. For those interested in my Brumation 101 document, check the information on this video for a link to where you can find it. For the preparation process, it's key to start about a month before this you start increasing the feed because you want the lizard to have a higher BCS score. In addition, you're going to need to find a spot that has cooler temperatures for this brunation period and get containers ready to where you can put your lizards in during the brunation process. Some people can even use controlled temperature like fridges or like wine fridges and other things just to make sure that there is air circulation and fresh air in there for your collared lizards. Otherwise, if you do have a cooler region in the house, like under the stairs in the basement, just make sure it has a controlled temperature or a temperature monitoring device just to make sure that it falls in the range, ideally between 50 and 55 degrees for the brumation process. Nothing colder and nothing above 65 because both of those spectrums can be harmful for your collared lizards. One important thing for collared lizards before you induce brumation is to make sure you bulk them up to have a higher BCS score or body condition score. Now this is a term that veterinarians like to use to score animals on a range of emaciated all the way up to obese. But this is a good way to tell when your collared lizards are ready to be induced for brumation and can survive the full length and have a healthy outcome. Now as you can see, some ways for collared lizards, you wanna look for full thickness in their tails, legs, almost having creases on their backs to where you can truly appreciate good muscle buildup and that they have a good body score so that any nutrients that is drawn during those colder temperatures doesn't really affect them and they can survive the full duration. Now here I have an aquaflame male who has already started to go through the process and he's in induction now. As you can see, he's still a little cool and hasn't heated up all the way but he's gonna be put through brumation shortly and he'll probably go the full five months to maybe even four months for him and he'll have a whole bunch of clutches that I'll produce with him next year. But again, he has a good body score, which is key to maintaining the collared lizards through the winter. For the second step, induction is a slow decrease in light and temperature. Now this is very key and important because if done wrong and any food left, in their systems it can be lethal to these guys during the brumation process so it's key to also taper off their food during this process down to no food at all probably for the last few days before they're completely off of heat and light the next step is maintenance and duration ideally you want to try and have them go through brumation for four to five months for optimal breeding performance here I have a description for you guys in my Brumation 101, generally trying to maintain 50 to 55 degrees. Again, you want to maintain hydration and have a proper area for these guys for that time frame. This allows for different hormones to be produced and stimulated once you go through the photo period of taking them out to have the representative sperm and eggs be developed. But again, maintaining this, through the process of the proper temperatures with hydration is ideal for the four to five month duration. Here's a 3cc syringe that I like to use in case I need to hydrate my collared lizards during brumation over the winter time. I generally use around semi warm water but not too warm because I don't want to cause like internal warming and increase their metabolism but yet you don't want to put something in that's colder than they are. 
So if you have a way to actually measure the water temperature and put exactly like 55 degree water in your collared lizard's syringe and then give it to them, that would be most optimal and ideal. Again, this just helps hydration. You don't want them to get too dehydrated because even though they are slowing down during this period, they do still have some metabolic um, actions so they will need water especially for those kidneys because you don't want anything bad to happen during their renal function during brumation so again maintain good hydration i have the water dishes but if i don't see that they're drinking i will syringe water to them again i like using a three cc syringe but a one cc is pretty much fine as well and you can use eye droppers that you can get at like CVS or any other pharmacy store. But again, these seem to work well. They don't bite through the hard plastic on the end and glass ones, they're fine. I am afraid in case a glass might break something they get in their mouth. So I generally stick with the plastic syringes, but again, hydration, very key during brumation. Finally, step four, waking up your collared lizard using a slow increase in light and temperature. I generally, because of the room temperatures being around 70, give or take, take them out of whatever cool area they were and sit them in the room temperature for about a day or two to get them acclimated to that. Then put them in their enclosure and let them have one to two more hours of heat of light per day, generally to around eight to 10 hours. And that's when I start feeding them. And then for breeding season, you want around 12 to 14 hours of daylight to help induce the photo periods needed to breed. I hope you enjoyed and learned some things from the four steps to properly brumate your collared lizard. Please stay tuned for other videos and check out my other ones including Incubation 101 and some Eastern Collared Lizard locales and colors. As well, please give me a like and a subscribe and you won't regret it as you're going to see some many cool videos to come. Thank you.